Thanks, everybody, for joining today. My name is Scott Larson, as you can see, hopefully, um, on the screen here, but I'm in the San Francisco IHH clinic, and today we're going to be talking about interval training uh, for cardiovascular health and fitness. So I'm going to cover a, a few concepts and topics and challenge everybody today. And then uh, after we I finish presenting, I'd love to answer questions. This is a popular topic that a lot of people have questions regarding. So if I could answer any of your questions, that'd be awesome. Uh, let's talk about <laughs> interval training. There's a lot of ways to talk about this, actually. And so I'm going to give you my highlights. It's a concept and a style of exercise that I've been recommending for many years. It's definitely something I've experimented with on a personal level. I, I do it once or twice a week. Um, I do a hit session for me. And so I've made it work for me over time and have my style. My, the way I like to do it personally is uh, not for everybody. Um, and I can talk about how I do it, but it's definitely a style of exercise that is extremely Extremely popular. Every year, the uh, a big survey comes out that talks about the most popular forms of exercise. And for like 10, 15 years, HIT's been the top 10 at least. In a lot of years, it's the top three. So interval training is super popular. My my opinion of why that is is there are pretty really pretty good studies supporting HIT training for fat loss. And fat loss is the primary reason people exercise, in my opinion. That's not true for everybody, of course, but some form of, um, you know, looking a certain way, reaching an ideal weight, uh, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that's why we exercise and the guidelines for exercise, it could include HIIT training for sure. And, but it shouldn't be your only way of cardiovascular training, but it can be a very helpful way. And one of the reasons, my personal reason why I think it helps so much is when you do hit training, it's a pretty intense stress and, but it's done under a way that works for you. And when you stress your body, uh, for your own sake, you get more resilient. And so life's challenges become a little bit easier. So, uh, from a health and wellness standpoint, hit training is one of those, uh, really good stressors. So, um, some people call it adaptive homeostasis. So you put a stress on the body and then your body adapts and it's a little bit better when it readapts to the stress. So it's it's definitely worthwhile, but you can do it wrong, in my opinion, and you can do it correctly. Um, so there's a couple of key concepts. It's a short burst of intense exercise with periods of rest. And we're talking intense here. This is not moderate exercise. This is intense exercise. Typically, the, the exercise bursts range from 60, 30 to 60 seconds with 30 to 60 second rest periods. And that can change based on your own preferences and stuff. It's a hit session only lasts, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes at the max because you're going at an intense level. You can't go much longer than that. And again, people like it because they can burn calories and um, help reach an ideal weight. And it's definitely true. It's, it's really true. Um, so lots of hormonal changes happen with intense exercise, insulin sensitivity, uh, appetite regulation, you know, leptin and ghrelin and some of the other appetite hormones are regulated, um, mood and sleep and, and such, but also the stress hormones, uh, epinephrine and cortisol are also elevated during hit sessions. So it can be one of those stressors that can harm you if you're not doing it carefully. So here's, here's, um, the basics of hit training. Uh, the ratios are important to understand. If you're a beginner, you work um, half as much as you rest. That's how I guess I would say that. So you would maybe work for 10 seconds and rest for 20 seconds or work for 30 seconds and rest for 60 seconds. That's kind of a, a basic way to understand how to come up with your own personal ratios. Intermediate, I would say half and half. So you work for 30 seconds, rest for 30 seconds. And then advanced and where a lot of the fat loss research comes from. And also the most um, time <laughs> to, to, to optimize your time with doing interval training. If you can work twice as long as you rest, I think you get the best benefits. But that's not a place where you should be starting. Definitely is you want to be starting over here at the be beginning. And you may not, you may work for 30 seconds and rest for two minutes on when you're first in, embarking on your hit training journey. That's totally fine. So don't, don't set these 
be in stone in terms of how you want to be doing your hit sessions, but it's a good place to start. So um, picking your exercises uh, in the gym, I would recommend starting hit on a bike. And the thing about bikes that I've noticed in my clinical work is bikes have like interval training settings and you don't want to use that actually. Um, the reason is because on those intervals, they usually add resistance to the pedals and that doesn't help. It actually doesn't support the science for hit training. Hit training is about speed and intensity, not about resistance. And so if you're on a bike, do your own, do your own intervals. You got to count the times, which is, could be kind of annoying, but you can set a timer and watch the clock and really stay tuned to that. So burst 30 seconds about speed, not about pedaling against resistance really hard. Um, and it's low impact, it's easier to recover. And so you might be able to, to pack in like two hit sessions a week. If you're doing it on a bike where maybe if you're running or on a treadmill, you might have to do less because the time for recovery is, is higher. Rowing is a good one that has the research behind it as well. It, I like it because it involves your arms and cardiovascular exercises don't often involve the arms. So it's a little bonus there, but the problem with rowing is a lot of people have poor posture um, you know, forward head, rounded back. And so that can set some people up for back pain and discomfort and maybe injury even. So be careful with rowing at higher speeds. Again, treadmill, really popular. A lot of people use treadmills already. So doing intervals on a treadmill is not a big deal for many people, but in my opinion, it's a little bit harder to recover from. It's a little bit higher impact and we're not going for impact on the body. We're going to tax the heart and lungs and that's the point, not necessarily to really tax your whole system. Your, the muscles and your connective tissue and stuff aren't really important when you're talking about HIIT training. It's just a cardiovascular exercise. That's, that's the whole point. So um, stair machines can also be used. There's not really research on them. And I like stair machines. They're very intense. And if you've been on a stair machine, your heart rate definitely gets going, which is a good goal. But it doesn't have a lot of res uh, research, in my opinion. I can't find a lot of good research on stair machines and hit training. There is some, but also there's some knee issues. People, if your knees hurt walking upstairs, I wouldn't use a stair machine to go intense. Um, picking your exercise from home. These are some of my, the ones I do. So running in place, you know, high knees or kicking your rear end, uh, doing variations of squats, uh, mountain climbers, burpees on the floor, jumping jacks, uh, jumping rope, uh, you know, squat jumps, uh, jumping lunges, those are more advanced moves, but they're really good. Split jacks, jumping jacks, as I said. Um, some people like shadow boxing. I don't really do that very often, but people do and love it. And it looks kind of fun. So shadow boxing, another honorable mention. And then when you're at home, just as, in, as if you're on these things, when you work, you work super hard. You don't want to stop working on the rest periods. You have to stay moderately paced. So a slow jog in place is uh, the goal for your active rest period because you don't want to recover too much to make to make your hit training successful plus you'll, you'll you'll burn more calories if you're actively resting so you go intense for 30 seconds and then you're jogging in place for 30 seconds um so that's important to understand um i would avoid you to do um a little bit of a little bit of caution on any strength training exercises that slow your pace. They're good for metabolic resistance training, which we're gonna talk about in the next session. So I like them and you can actually use them for sure. But in my opinion, things that are that slow you down, like you can't do pushups very quickly. Some people are amazing, but for most of us normal people like me, pushups are kind of slow. Uh, crunches, sit-ups are also slow. Using a lot of weighted stuff like weighted squats or different squat deadlift variations, you end up going a little slower. And so your heart rate suffers by not increasing as much and you don't end up huffing and puffing as much. And so those cycles can sometimes be wasted, in my opinion, if you're going too slow, because here's the key. Um, here's the secret about HIIT training. <laughs> you have to work at a pace that your, your the oxygen delivery is lacking. So your body taps into those other systems for energy the lactic acid system. So you, 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 you literally cannot suck in the enough oxygen during your hit training sessions to 
to compensate, to give your body the oxygen it needs to, you know, break down sugars, to give your body ATP for energy. You have to tap into other energy systems. That's the key for HIT. So when you're going really slow, and even though you're working at an intense level, you end up not tapping into those, that space of the anaerobic threshold as it's called, you have to go there. And so you have to go fast to do that. That's why on the cycling aspect of it, speed versus resistance is key for doing a good hit session. Um, this is a, an example ratio of a hit session. You know, you get your heart rate checked before you start. What's your resting heart rate? You know, take a, take a, take note of that. Start warming up. Um, make sure your body's warmed up. And usually in the warm up, this is a little aside, but your body will tell you if it's not ready for a hit session that day and you want to listen to it. If you're hurting somewhere or you have, you know, problems with the warm ups and you're just getting started, you have some problems, you're not feeling good, you don't push it. Anyway, that's my advice. And then you go through your work ratios, like again, 30 seconds, 20 seconds. 15 seconds of intense work. And then you're going at a, you know, low to, I would suggest a moderate pace for your rest periods. And then you repeat those intervals as much as you want. You're tracking your heart rate through that, the time that you're working. And then you start your cool down and then you track your progress on a notebook or your, your notes on your phone, a uh, home-based hit session. This is one I do personally. So I wrote it in here, but you run in place, jumping jacks or running in place, mountain climbers, I'll do burpees. Um, and so I'll, this will be like a 10 or 15 minute hit session, including a warm up and cool down. And by the end of this, personally, I'm huffing and puffing. I'm an intermediate type of guy. I'm a middle of the road type of guy. So this is some, some things to ask after your session. Did you work hard enough? Um, can, could you have pushed it more? Uh, a good way to measure that is if you can speak easily, <laughs> if you can have a conversation with somebody it's not that it was a bad um, session, but it was probably not intense enough to be where you want to be. So you want to work harder to get to the place where you can do an interval session and then not speak. Um, and then I love tracking um, your progress, whatever you're doing, the hit training, exercise with weights, uh, yo even yoga, uh, you know, your, your jogs are going and running a couple miles. Um, tracking it and then asking yourself, is this getting too easy? Because if it is, and you start to plateau with like your weight loss goals or your fitness goals, then you need to step it up and maybe change your type of exercise, go from a bike to a treadmill. Maybe it's time, or maybe you do a longer session, or maybe you change your interval ratios. Maybe you go to the advanced stage where you're working longer than you're resting and stuff like that. So you, you ask yourself if it's getting easy and then you got to push yourself a little bit harder. And so that's HIT training. A uh, couple of more n thoughts on HIT training, then I'll open it up for questions. Basically, HIT training, uh, you know, when they when you see on the internet a HIT training session um, that involves like something around five to seven minutes, I wouldn't recommend pursuing that as your primary goal. You may want to experiment with those really short sessions, but typically it's not enough to get you to the place where you're tapping into that anaerobic, you know, without oxygen work. So unless you're a really conditioned athlete, those, that's not where I would start. And then if you're really new to this, um, doing something that's really low impact is key. So getting a spin bike for $200 on the internet or at your local sporting goods store or on Amazon or whatever is a worthy investment. You don't need even one that's tapped into electricity. So you can do a spin bike with very low impact and do HIIT training um, for a pretty good small price. Uh, body weight is fantastic too. So I think running in place is probably one of the better exercises to start with to see what you can do with your body to get it pumping. Um, and then, like I said, one session a week is plenty. This is one aspect of your fitness, one aspect of trying to um, live a healthy lifestyle. You can do HIIT twice a week, but honestly, if you're doing HIIT more than that, a, you're not incorporating other aspects of fitness that are important, like strength training, which we'll talk about in the next session. And maybe you're working too hard. So I have people who start doing HIT and they do it seven days a week. It's not, in my opinion, it's not sustainable in that way. And you have to remember that the human body gets 
stronger and healthier when it's resting after a stress. So as you stress your system with like a hit session and then you rest for a couple of days, that's when you get healthier. <laughs> you're, you're not getting healthier when you're putting your body under incredible amounts of stress. You're, you put the stress on the body as like a tool and then you rest and that's when you improve your health. And then it only happens if you're consistent over time. So you don't want to go longer than a week or two without doing some sort of intense interval training. If you want to incorporate this to make it work for you. Alrighty. Well, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I don't see anybody jumping on a question. So hopefully everything was answered about hit training. Keep it really simple and make it work for you. Don't worry about following videos. Just do your own thing. That's my, <laughs> that's my opinion and my bias. So alrighty. Well, I'm available for questions, so hit me up if you have anything. Otherwise, thanks for joining. I really appreciate it, and hopefully this is helpful. Thanks, guys.